All right, here we go. YouTube family, here we go. I was gonna wait to open this tomorrow, but it arrived last Friday, right before we zipped up to the mountains, and so I didn't have a chance to open it. Uh, just ran out of time, and I just can't wait. I gotta open it, and can you guess what's inside? Hit pause. What is inside here? That's a pretty broad guessing range, but if you can guess the company, and I will just give you a hint, it's a shoe that has never appeared on this channel. All right, so that, that narrows it down actually quite a bit. So if you know the lineup that I usually run in, uh, and I'll also say one other thing, my first racing spike of my entire life in seventh grade, all right, was this company, okay? And we're just gonna kick off this vlog with an unboxing, why not? All right, let me just grab the knife here. All right, are you, are you ready? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. By the way, I hope uh, if you didn't see last night's live stream where we gave away the running shoes, you might want to go check it out, upper right hand corner. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Uh, so like, listen. All right, uh, I'll just I'll just show it to you and then I'll try and I'll try and break it down for you. Oh, I like the color of the box. I'll put it that way. All right, are you ready? Is your guest down in the comments? Dun 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 dun! Mizuno in the house. Mizuno in the house. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. It's a long story as to how these shoes arrived in my house, but I'm I'm excited. Listen, I have no experience in Mizuno except except for my first racing spikes, and I'm gonna try and find a picture of these racing spikes and put them on the screen right now. There you go, those were my first racing spikes in seventh grade, 1998, a little while ago. And I haven't really, I don't think I've run in Mizuno since. There's just so many shoes out there. So, listen, I'm beholden to no one, open to trying any and all running shoes. Should we open them up now or should I? Should we wait for, I actually don't even, wait, there it is. All right, you ready for it? The Wave Knit R, oh. Oh, look at that color. Oh my goodness. The Wave Knit R2. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Whole, first of all, you nailed the colorway. You know how I like bright green, Mizuno. Okay, that is pretty exciting. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, they're brand new. Oh yeah. Little sniffy sniff. All right, all right, so there you go. Mizuno Wave Knit R2 now in my possession. Mizuno, I'm excited. So it's definitely a, a knit upper. Really fascinating. And all right, I'm not gonna run in these today. I had another game plan, so we're gonna run in some other shoes today. But this is exciting. Listen, again, beholden to no one. Uh, I actually, I don't even know how much these cost. So I'll give you a cost breakdown in a little bit but uh and then of course we're going to talk about marathon training and the game plan moving forward since the race was canceled on saturday it uh it changes things a little bit and it also opens things up a little bit as well so i'm excited about that and this all right let's lace up In case you did not see the first impressions of the Nike Zoom Fly Fly Knit vlog, upper right hand corner, go check it out. Uh, after this run, we'll be at about 20 miles in the shoe in the Zoom Flies, and then uh, I'll get you my full review 
at 50 miles. So we might hit that uh, probably in the next seven days. So it's coming. It's coming. Woo! 13 miles in the bank. Okay, get getting ready for the live stream, the shoe giveaway. That's right, the 10,000 subscribers shoe giveaway. I'm putting all of the guys' names into the New Balance box. Uh, these are high schoolers who really could use some good new running shoes. So, but I just checked my email and it's not quite 5 p.m. And sure enough, two more just got their names submitted. So I got to go inside, print their names, put them in the box. Uh, but that is what I am doing right now oh best of luck to everybody oh my goodness and the ladies box is already filled up we'll see there's like four minutes left so we'll see if any more ladies names come through in the nike box oh man you guys just keep keep working keep fighting keep working like you're taking your shoes to the to the to the limits and i commend you for persevering in this sport that we love even though the midsole cushion might not be as alive as you would like just keep going, keep going. But hopefully we can help some uh, some ladies and guys out tonight. Oh my goodness, all right. And the key word, the key word, it's actually a number. That's right, here we go. Here's the calendar, 67. That's the key number today, all right? Down in the comments, thanks for hitting it up. Why? 67 days to go until the Cleveland Marathon. That's right, that when you're watching this on Tuesday, uh, it's 67 days to go. Now listen, I know I've talked about in the past, you don't wanna get too amped up too far ahead of a race, right? Your mental capacity cannot handle that type of excitement and enthusiasm for 67 days. However, what happened Saturday, just uh, two days ago, three days ago, the race was canceled now listen america's uphill that was a fun race it was going to be a, a b race not my peak race but i was ready i was ready to rock and roll so now now that it's in the rear view mirror it's all it's all in it's time to go all in like i am i was waiting for it waiting for america's uphill kind of just buying my time and training putting in the work and it didn't happen and that's okay and but now it's like boom cleveland marathon peak race we are now entering the second half of this training block so remember i i, I know i've mentioned this but basically i'm doing a double peak in this training block because the training block started january 1st i like my training blocks to be three to four months preferably four months well January, February, March, April, May. I That's five months. I knew in my mind that five months was gonna be just a little too long to hold a lot of good fitness. And so this is how the rest of the training block is gonna go between now and Cleveland Marathon, May 19th. Basically, I peaked out at 85 miles a week uh, two weeks ago. Last week was just 40 miles for the week. And then I took Saturday, I did that one mile jog with my boys, that was fun. And then yesterday, uh, took the day completely off. So now, hitting the reset button, I just hit the reset button. My legs feel amazing, like, especially since I didn't race on Saturday, I feel really good. So now, I'm like back to not square one, I would say square four, okay? And I wanna get to square 10, between now and the Cleveland Marathon. So now we're gonna start, you're gonna see it on Strava. You're gonna see my mileage start to creep up again and creep up again. This week, I'll be hitting, remember I like a range, I'll be hitting between 60 and 70 miles this week and then keep going and keep going. And here's the other component to the rest of this training block. Listen, January, February, incredible amounts of strength, of altitude training, running in snow, uh, hill work just like long lsd runs long slow distance up mountains like boom building that aerobic engine from the ground up and now not quite yet not quite yet 
I'm going to continue to do this LSD, hill work, altitude work, uh, running in the snow because it's supposed to snow on Wednesday. And so for the next two weeks, maybe three weeks at the most, I'm going to continue to build that strength. That'll give in that hill work and that running in the snow and altitude. And, and that'll give me what? That'll give me six to seven weeks to sharpen up. And oh, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see a distinct shift. And I've already started. Remember two weeks ago, I did the threshold run. Tomorrow, I'm just gonna tell you right now. Why not? Let's just tell you right now. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, I'm pulling out the Adios 4s for another threshold run, okay? It's gonna be a doozy. Come back for my first impressions of the Adios 4 tomorrow. Uh, but I will begin to do less hill work in two weeks from now and more road fast specific workouts it's coming so i know i know you've been patient with me on the, the mountain running it's almost time to sh to begin the sharpening and to begin the the speed work and to, to get that leg turnover going like you've never seen before okay and i'm even gonna i'm gonna begin to dabble in it tomorrow in the audios 4 it's going to be a baby one but it's 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 almost time it's, it's so close to, to really letting loose can you tell i'm a little excited okay topic number two around getting ready for a peak race for me it happens to be the marathon sharpening races okay critical really important i don't know if we've actually ever talked about this if you are getting ready let's just say it's a marathon if you're getting ready for a marathon and you probably already know this or let's just or maybe it's just it's a 10k it's really important to do a shorter race before your peak race that way why you got to get your legs you got to get your mind ready to go fast and ready to Frankly, I don't want to say deal with competition, but you want to get ready to to work hard and to to race. Like it's a different mindset, and you're like it's amazing what your body can do when there's people around you and you're pushing in a competitive environment. So for me, I'm gonna do a 5K in March, a 5K, a 10K in early to mid April, and then probably not a half marathon, although that's okay as well. I'm going to go with a 10 miler called the Cherry Creek Sneak, okay, in late April. I think it's almost the last day of April. It's exactly three weeks before the Cleveland Marathon. So again, what you're, I'm building up 5K, 10K, 10 miler, marathon. Marathon is the peak race. These other three races, sharpening races, getting ready to get ready, okay? Sharpening the legs, sharpening the competitive mindset so that when I get to Cleveland, it's time to rock and roll, okay? So I'll be curious. All right, well, let's let's just, let's do it. Question of the day. Do you do sharpening races leading up to a peak race? And if so, like, what is your strategy? When do you like to do them? I, I love the three week window. I think four weeks is a little too far out for me. And I think definitely anything under three weeks is too close. Um, and for me, like I'm actually, the reason I'm doing a 10 miler and not a half marathon is that the competition in this 10 miler is very steep, like really fast guys, like 50, uh, we're at altitude. I want to say like 52 minutes approx. I, I could be wrong on that. I don't know what the winners run. I got to look that up actually, but they run fast. And so that is the question of the day. Do you incorporate sharpening races leading up to your peak race okay and so that's my strategy again 5k 10k 10 miler marathon bada bing bada boom baby bada bing bada boom okay that's it for today again keyword key number 67 and if you were not here for last night's giveaway you can go watch it on the home page go check it out upper right hand corner the running shoe giveaway it was pretty epic, and congrats to everyone that won some brand new running shoes. And yeah, we will do it again. We can't do it every week, maybe someday. But listen, we're, we're one step in front of the other every single day. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other. Mmm. Mmm.